Hello, this is Miss Hill again, and this is the third of the arithmetic review lessons, and we're going to talk about multiplication and division. And I'm going to start off by talking about multiplying and dividing positives and, and negatives, um, and describing it in a kind of twisted way that I like to call the karma of multiplying and dividing. Okay, so we're going to assume that positive equals good, and negative equals bad. And there are good people in this world, and there are bad people, and there are good things that can happen, and there are bad things that can happen. In our examples, for good people are going to be Gandhi, and our bad person is going to be Hitler. Our good thing is going to be winning the lottery, and our bad thing is going to be getting hit by a truck. So when I multiply or divide a positive number times a positive number, it's like a good thing happening to a good person, which we want to happen, which is good, right? We want good things to happen to good people, so a positive times a positive is a positive, okay? So if I have a positive times a negative, it's like a good thing happening to a bad person. So it's like Hitler winning the lottery, and we don't want that, that's bad. So that's gonna be negative, okay? So then if I have a negative times a positive, that is a bad thing happening to a good person. So that's Gandhi getting hit by a truck, which is bad. So that's negative. Now, haha, here's the funny one. If I do negative times a negative, that is a bad thing happening to a bad person. That's like Hitler getting hit by a truck, which for the universe is actually quite good. So here are the sign combos that you can use to, uh, you know, remember how to multiply positive and negative numbers. There's an easier way though. Um, you just have to remember that when you're multiplying and dividing that every pair of negative symbols are gonna cancel in multiplication or division. So if I just have like negative one times negative one times negative one times negative one times negative one, I can remember that these pair cancel sign-wise, those pair cancel sign-wise, and then I just have a negative number left over which is just some negative, well in this case it's negative one. Okay, works with division two. If I have a combo problem like negative one times negative two divided by negative three times negative four, I automatically can figure out the sign in the very beginning. I have one, two, three, four negatives, so they're an even number of them. The pairs cancel, so I know my final answer is gonna be positive, and then I just have to figure out what this is. In this case, it's two over 12 or one sixth. Happy face, all right. So that's the basics on the signs. Now let's talk about fractions. Um, and let's make some fractions negative, um, just to kind of incorporate the two things. So remember, when you multiply fractions, you multiply the numerator times the numerator, and the denominator times the denominator. And if something is a mixed number, you have to convert it to an improper fraction. So if I have negative 1 half times 5 sevenths, I'm going to knock this sign out in the very beginning. I know that I have a negative times a positive, bad thing happening to a good person, that's bad, so I get a negative, and then I just multiply numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator, and then see if that thing can simplify, it can't, so box it off, have it face, okay? Now, it works for division two. If I have um, negative five divided by negative two thirds, I'm going to take care of the sign in the very beginning. I know my final answer has to be positive because it's a bad thing happening to a bad person, which karmically is good, right? So then I'm going to, I have to remember to divide now. So I have to take five and I got to divide it by two thirds. And remember, division is multiplying by the reciprocal and I don't reciprocalize both numbers, I just take the reciprocal of the second number. And so this is equivalent to five times three halves. And then since five doesn't have a denominator, I can go ahead and add one uh, of one and then multiply numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator, check to see if it can simplify, it can't. Then over here where my sign was waiting for me, I'm going to actually put my answer and box it off happy face, all right? Now, um, I can also look at whole strings of multiplications of fractions. If I have a negative one-third times negative one-third times negative one-third, I can tell my sign from the very beginning. Three negatives, two of them cancel out to make a positive. My final answer is gonna be negative. One times one times one is, well, one. Three times three times three is 27 and then I have negative 1 27 Now, as a note, I can put the negative sign in the numerator, right outside over here, or in the denominator. It really doesn't matter, as long as there's just one of them. Uh, the standard is to either put it in the numerator or put it out front. N it, rarely do we put it in the denominator, that just looks weird. All right, and so then a quick reminder of, 
of exponents in fractions, right? Um, this means that I want 2 ninths and I want to square it. So that means that's 2 ninths times 2 ninths, and 2 times 2 is 4, and 9 times 9 is 81. A really common thing that I see is uh, people will um, square the numerator, but then forget to square the denominator. So make sure that you know you expand it out either on paper or mentally, and remember, it's numerator, numerator, denominator, denominator. All right, now um, I like to simplify before I multiply. I like to make my life a little bit easier. Um, so we're gonna talk about canceling and simplifying before you actually multiply the numbers out. Okay, so if I see 9 fifths times 15 sixths, I could multiply 9 times 15 and 5 times 6, but I don't wanna do that. Those numbers are too big. I mess up with arithmetic way too often. So what I'm gonna look at is, I'm gonna look at the numbers diagonally and see if they have common factors. So 5 and 15 have common factors. And it's always easier to break down a number, like to prime factorize it, than it is to multiply stuff together. So I'm going to think of 15 as now just 5 times 3, okay, instead of 15. And I'm going to look at the 6, and I'm going to say, well, that's not really a 6. That's really a 2 times a 3. And that's not really a 9. That's really a 3 times 3. And, well, 5 is still just 5. So then I'm going to see, well, what's, what numbers appear on numerators and denominators? Well, over here I have two threes. They can cancel. And then over here diagonally, I've got a five in the denominator, five in the numerator. Those guys cancel too. And so what I have left is two threes, which is nine, not six, nine, and then a two. So my answer is nine halves. Now since we're in algebra, we actually prefer improper fractions, so you don't have to take the extra step to make it a mixed number. We only like to use mixed numbers in algebra when we're talking about things in context. Like it's weird to say I have an area of nine halves, right? You can say I have an area of four and a half, that makes more sense. And you don't have to convert these things to decimals. We actually don't like decimals. Decimals is a lot more work. We kind of avoid them like the plague. And the only time I really want to see decimals is uh, in word problem context, especially with things like money. So don't go converting these things to decimals. Like, tr deal with it as a fraction. It's so much easier. Okay, so let's do a long string here just to see how this works. If you ever see me give you a problem like this, I don't want you to multiply this whole thing out you know, one number at a time, that's horribly tedious. I'm checking to make sure you can do this cancellation trick because when I change the numerators to variables and the denominators to variables, there's no other way to do it. You have to cancel before you multiply. So I've got a problem right here, mixed numbers, unhappy for multiplication. That's another reason why we like improper fractions better because I don't have to worry about any of these. I can just multiply straight up. I don't have to like convert anything. So one and four fifths is nine fifths. And then I have a one third. Then I have a 2 ninths, an 8 thirteenths, and a 15 sixteenths. Now, I'm not going to um, multiply those numbers together. That's gross. Ew. I'm going to see first if there's stuff that just, like, cancels really quickly. Like, those 9s are gone. I don't have to worry about them at all. Then I'm going to look and see what I have left over. Oh, look. I have an 8 times a 2, which will cancel with the 16. And then a 3 times a 5, which will cancel with the 15. And what do I have left? I have a 1 and a 13. So that means my answer is 1 13th. So much easier than actually multiplying those things out. Okay, now the last thing I want to talk about is the dreaded fraction in a fraction. Because those just look wrong. You don't want to ever see a fraction in a fraction. And so you have to think about how to deal with them. And there's more than one way to deal with them, but I'm just going to show you one. And that's to rewrite this fraction as a division. So right now this fraction bar, which we call a vinculum, um, can be rewritten with an obelisk, which is the old school traditional division symbol. I just have to remember that it's numerator divided by denominator. So this is the same thing as one half divided by five, which if I remember, division is multiplied by the reciprocal, the same thing as one half times one fifth, right? Which is one tenth, okay? Now, I just have to think about which one's a numerator and which one's a denominator. So if I have eight divided by four fifths, the numerator, that's an 8. The denominator is the 4 fifths. I just rewrote it directly. I didn't try flipping anything yet. I'm not going to flip it until I get it into this form. And then I have 8 times 5 fourths. And oh, hey, I can do my canceling trick. The 8 and the 4 cancel. That makes that a 2, which gives me um, 10 as my answer. Okay. And if I have a fraction in the numerator and denominator, I do the exact same thing. 
So if I have 3 fourths over 2 sevenths, that's the same thing as 3 fourths divided by 2 sevenths, which can be rewritten as 3 fourths times 7 halves. And then nothing cancels, so I'm just going to straight up multiply, and I get 21 over 8. Box it off. Happy face.